I'm in for Lewis Turner because he begins our live team coverage at the St. Simons Pier this morning. So many people are wondering, what is that, that hope, Lewis? What are the signs that they're seeing out there? Well, just reported from St. Katie that overnight is uh, tapping, hearing tapping, and tapping sounds being returned by the Coast Guard, who had to suspend rescue operations right now as the sun went down, uh, the shifting, the instability, with considering there's some 4,200 vehicles on board, as well as a car carrying ship, the Golden Ray, actually en route from Brunswick up to Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, all ship traffic right now. In fact, any anybody wanting to get out on the boat, you got to stay within a, a half mile, stay away a half mile from this vessel. Environmental concerns, of course, out there, though, uh, assured that all uh, fuel and oil has been contained to that area. We'll have to check it out. Um, the rescue uh, immediately at 2 a.m. Sunday when the, the ship began to list, uh, it really quickly the Coast Guard was able to get some 20 people off the boat. That included one local bar pilot as well, uh, mainly South Korean crew, but there are still four on board still listening for that tapping. That's why they have uh, hope that these uh, individuals could still be alive and frankly could possibly be in that engine room area where they uh, they believe these folks were, were holding watch overnight as the uh, ship was getting underway just about offshore. So the port remains closed and uh, as sun comes up every so often as we come back out here we see uh, you, you can't really see anything in the in the cover of darkness but every so often you see a spotlight go up and they've got uh, it's just it really illuminates just how massive this ship is 656 feet in length. From another perspective though right now on the other side of the sound Lana Harris from Jekyll Island this morning reporting live. Good morning Lana. Good morning. We're talking about the economic impacts here. This is one of the busiest ports in the south and right now no ships are being allowed to come through it. It's at a standstill. So these impacts economically are wide ranging from small scale to large scale on that smaller scale. You had dozens of workers here at the port only to find this massive ship capsized yesterday and their ships nowhere to be seen as Port of Brunswick again is closed to mar marine traffic as this rescue operation continues and all those ships were canceled. So for those employers, that of course means that the work that was supposed to be done by all their employees has also been stalled. And then that leads to one of the most sweeping impacts. As I mentioned before, this is a busy port. It's the number one port for new auto imports. One terminal serves more than 60 auto and heavy equipment manufacturers, including luxury vehicles like BMW and Mercedes Benz. And right now, none of them can get in. So money is being lost on all fronts here. And of course, more tragically, there are still those four people who have not been accounted for, possibly waiting to be rescued for over a day now. So we spoke with one of the workers whose jobs has been stalled by this about the impacts to them and on their reaction. Found out that the ship had cancer and I didn't know what was going on because I was ready to go to work this morning. No work, no money. And I'm kind of upset, but I hope everybody's safe and okay. Now this port will remain closed until officials reopen this and of course that's going to be when these rescue efforts have finished. Like Lou said, we are on the other side of that so we're hoping when this gets a little brighter outside we're able to give you another vantage point. It looks massive from the little I can see in the dark here, but of course we are still monitoring this and we'll keep you updated on air and online at firstcoastnews.com with anything more on this. But for now here in Jekyll Island, I'm Lana Harris, First Coast News on your side. Yeah, Lana, thank you so much. So speaking of vantage points, we can take a look up on high up from our tower cam right now. It's a grainy shot still because it's so dark out, but it, it really illustrating just how massive this is. Now, environmental concerns, of course, still out there, and we'll wait and see what uh, exactly is, uh, precautions are taken to prevent any sort of spillage uh, from that vessel, though we are told things have been mitigated as much as possible. But the main focus right now is those four individuals still on board the ship. And of course, we will continue to monitor those uh, efforts. And if you want to continue to follow along as, as you head into work or school today, uh, download the First Coast News app and watch on firstcoastnews.com as uh, any updates will be immediately put right there. In the meantime, from St. Simons Island, I'm Lewis Turner, First Coast News on your side. Back to you.